Hey, we haven't recorded a an episode without a guest, just a, and not a Q and A episode in a long time. That's true. Yeah, this upcoming episode is gonna blow. I felt closer to you guys. It's gonna blow your cock off. <laughs> Or is it have, I want to see something just dropped really, really off. dramatic. Or is yeah. it socks? Yeah. You're supposed to say blow your socks off. Yeah. yeah. My bad. Yep. Hey, uh, guess what we still have this month for free? You can get it for free. What the No it? BS six-pack formula. By the way. It's like nine months of personal training. By the way, the, 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 the No BS six-pack formula. Let me just break this down for you. You will literally get more visible abs if you train your abs properly, if you build them a little bit. Because everybody's like, don't build your abs. Bullshit. If you work your abs properly, they will stick out more at the same body fat percentage. That happened to me. I didn't get any leaner. I got a six-pack because I started training them properly. This is the no BS six-pack formula. You get that for free. We also give you the nutrition guide and the fasting guide for free. And all you got to do to get those for free is enroll in either the RGB bundle, which has MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. If you follow them in order, you're a badass. It's nine months. You follow them in order. You start with Anabolic. You go to performance, you go to aesthetic. At the end of that nine months, you're going to look hot as shit. Or you get the MAPS Super Bundle, Steamy. which is the same thing, except we also include MAPS Anywhere, which is the equipment-free MAPS program, which will blow your mind, uh, and Prime. Prime, there's nothing else out there like Prime. Prime is very different, and it teaches you how to program what you do before your workout, which, by the way, makes a huge difference and the kind of results you get yeah. from your workout. It individualizes the process. So you enroll in the RGB bundle or the MAP Super Bundle, you'll get three things for free. Nutrition guide, fasting guide, no BS six-pack formula for free. I think that's probably the best giveaway we've ever had in our entire lives. This is what you do. You turn off the podcast. You go on Safari. You go on whatever. Go on your your, your internet, mindpumpmedia.com. Mindpumpmedia.com. Go on our website. It's, a, it's an ugly website right now. It's going to look better. I know it is. But it's easy. It's easy. You just look for it. RGB Bundle, Map Super Bundle, enroll. Boom. You get all the free stuff. Do it now. Mindpumpmedia.com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Where did you get that sweater? Can we talk about your outfit You got, right you got now? a real dad outfit. Right Can we talk yeah. about your outfit right now? It's very, uh, I'm going to go pick up. The kids at three o'clock. This one right you know here. What I mean? yeah. No, bro, this is in style, bro. You're too comfortable. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm. You're too, too com- comfortable with yourself. What? I think there is a there- part. I think there's a part of no. health. I think there's a part of healthiness of being a little insecure. No. Yeah, I think so. I think you're too. <laughs> do you know I what they call too, your outfit? Says I'm too secure with myself. Do you know what? Do you That's know what, what it says? Do you know what too much? Too. Com- you know what comfortable <laughs> translates to? <laughs> right. Confidence. Yeah, I know. it yeah. says it all so over confident. you. I'm so it says I'm, ex- it all over I'm extremely you. confident. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll get naked right now, motherfucker. <laughs> Don't challenge my comfort level. Actually, you know it's Don't great. push him in that direction. I'll pull my dick. You know, we, we always talk to our audience, right? I think multiple times we said this. He already on the show. doesn't shower. People ask us about the whole greatest strength is your greatest weakness, and I'm gonna pick on Sal right now because he has what the fuck? Because he has oh incre- what, what the no, fuck? Because you have incre- the tide just you, turned. How did this get? How did I get lambasted? No, 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 no. Because you have you have lambasted. You have incredible self awareness and. That's one of the things I, I I absolutely adore about you. I think it's a it's an incredible you, trait. You adore. It's I do. I feel like it's, a child. Right. It, oh, I, thanks. Was that the, not the right word? Like, no, that was, no, right was good. That was a good I feel word. Like no. Adam has like hearts in his no, eyes. No, I feel right like now. you adore yeah, me. Like, Continue. Yeah. No. I just there. There's not <laughs> a lot of men that I meet that I feel are on that. And in in this is see, I was really complimenting myself on the same level <laughs> as I am. <laughs> You're so good, (laughs) right? (laughs) He thought it was a compliment. I just went right back. You know, you remind me of myself. (laughs) We (laughs) call you the rebounder, Adam. Not quite as smart and good looking. Compliment, dish, boom, bounces back. No, (laughs) so I, I really, I feel like you, um, you, you have this ability to do that. Like so, and I think that one of your, by far, your strengths is you truly are so secure with yourself. And, and and incredibly confident, and enough to even talk about your in, this, the insecurities. We've talked, we've had episodes, right? We did a whole episode yeah. on our insecurities, yeah. so we're all very uh, comfortable with admitting that. We put it out there. I'm insecure about my security, yeah. but I think I also it's too think it's too much. <laughs> I also think we're going through a transition in this company right oh, now. Man, yeah, here it comes, uh, and and. Because we're we're all so comfortable with ourselves, I even found myself doing that, not realizing like, hey, you know, it's unfortunate, but we are in a very superficial world and even more so a very superficial business. 
that people on the outside are going to, you know, our website is seeing, you know, X amount of impressions every single month. So tens of thousands, hundred thousands of people coming through. We're going through. through a facelift process. Well, and what's, and, and I know, boobs. and yeah. I know that people are going to come on my, on, on there and they're going to, they're going to see us. So they're going to see how we present ourselves, uh, everything from the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we act and things like that. These are things that like you actually have to start to think about when you get on this larger scale like it was all fun and games when we started this and said hey we're, we're going to do it because we love doing it we want to help some people out but when it's turned into a, a, a legitimate real business these are the conversations that you have to have with yourself on okay this person could potentially have just been scouring the internet randomly found us what is the first impression i want to get now the normal me zero fucks which was our very first t-shirt that we ever released was like this, that was our mentality, zero fucks. And I believe that we've stayed true to that all mm. the way through. But then at one point, does your business mind start to challenge yourself and go like, well, fuck, how, now how do, I, how do I fit in between the two of those? Like, how do I, how do I own up and know that, that that's uh, important, but then I also know that it's not important to me? You know what's interesting about that, that whole process? Uh, there's a few things. One, uh, I think uh, optimizing your business uh, through the internet you got to look at the. You got to talk to the experts, and I'm. I'm definitely. I don't think any, the three of us are not. We're not experts in this, which is why now lately we're we're asking people who we yeah, think we're consulting. We're consulting a lot. Like, okay, what 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 should this look like? How should this be presented? That's very very important. Now, on a personal level, now mind you, though, I know that what was really hard for us and why we waited so long for this was because we're also very passionate about it portraying who we really are. That's the thing. So right. here's what's interesting to me. It's um the internet business is it's there's there's some try some tested tried and true methods which is what we're consulting people with. And then there's like a lot of it that's like emerging and new and there seems to be this trend that where people want just real, like as real as possible. And it's it's kind of recent. Like I'm even noticing on fitness pages, yeah, it's people are it's refreshing. Dude, people are posting pictures of themselves, like relaxed or you know no makeup or and they're using that now to build their business because well, off there's air, like this this off air. We talked a lot about this with Tom Billu, right? I mean, yeah, just, it's that whole realism thing. And so, for and as soon as something becomes a thing, then it loses its authenticity. And so you can see this. Like there's pages that I'll follow on Instagram where the fitness model dude or girl is like super, super fake all the time. And then all of a sudden they're like, here's my stomach relaxed. Yeah. yeah. I'm a normal person but, too. But like a split image, I'm like, oh, now I'm now I'm flexing. Yeah. And you know? it's so just, just to make sure. Make and sure. so, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think because, um, f I mean, I want, for me personally, I want my, I want professionals to consult with me to make my personal pages optimized for reaching as many people as possible for you know uh, maximizing business potential for maximizing the ability of whatever platform I'm using to communicate whatever I'm trying to communicate because that's the ultimate goal but I also on my personal level for myself um, I, I don't I, I think I just I don't know it's almost like if you change that, you might actually fuck yourself. You know what I mean? Especially if you've built. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but you know we've hired three different companies and fired all three of them to do exactly this for us. And mm -hmm. the, and the reason why we all said fuck it, we're not we're not going to hire anybody. Else. We basically gave up on that because we cared so much more about making sure that that the brand stayed true to who we were than we cared about it, optimizing it. As, as important as that is, well, in I business. think whoever works with us, like now we've got you know like Taylor, right? Taylor works with us, and I think. He understand. He's actually a fan, and he understands what our you know messages. And so, all so far, all the suggestions he's been making and, and helping us with feel super authentic. They're ideas that we wouldn't have come up with because we're not hip to this stuff. But when you see it, you're like, oh fuck yeah, that totally represents mm. us. The other companies, they just weren't. They didn't understand us. You know what I mean? So, like, there were some ads that we did on Facebook through that other company or whatever, and I saw them like, holy fuck, like this this represents the shit that we hate in the fitness industry. You know what I mean? This like this isn't this isn't who we are. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I guess it's that's probably one of the difficult things it's all brands go through. Yeah, it's a fine line because 
I mean, you, you make an example for like a like a Steve Jobs character where it's like he's got shitty fashion sense. You know what I mean? Like he's got this turtleneck and jeans, and like he just influenced everybody. But it became his. It, it became, became his thing, and, and people like mimicked it. Did you just and compare then, us to Steve Jobs? I, I I had to go straight to the top, bro. <laughs> right? I, right I think you compared. Uh, oh, I love. Me. This is what I love. No, about No, I didn't compare. This is there what no I love comparison. about you guys. I'm saying that like you know if Sal, you know he if he wants to keep My, going with the the soccer indoor thing you know like, <laughs> and, and you know the ready to pick up at, at three o'clock it works you know what i mean there's gonna be like a huge following that like this it's gonna be a fad i don't well, know right? right? you this, influence them, like right? the this wife is a, this is the a question i have be, for taylor you know uh, what i'm saying this is a question that i have for taylor is that um because i i somewhat agree with you guys i can see that side of it and then i also see it, the other side of it so i feel torn on you know how you do, bro. That. You're the high fashion guy. I mean, don't don't deny it. Like you're you're that guy. Like, well, yeah, but I've always been you. that. I've always that's been. What that. I mean, that's why it works, and that's yeah. why your progression of it makes a lot of sense. You but, know, I'm somewhere in the middle between you guys. So, you know, I think that's it's like just like everything. We always have like a, like two poles, and then yeah. one sort of in the well, middle. This no, also this yeah. also reminds me though. Listen though, this reminds me a lot of the conversations that I would have with my clients, right? And you have to ask yourself too that. Like the, the, you've gone through par parts of your life, right, where you did things like taking care of yourself, whether it be grooming, uh, you know, or how you put your outfit together. And then I I remember going through this, and it was probably between like I don't know twenty seven to thirty range, where so before that I was I've always been in into like you know shoes and things like that, like and I, I care about fashion, whatever. Uh, but then I went through this phase where. I didn't when mm -hmm. I and I think that was a, a lot of that was me realizing that a lot of that a lot of that was driven from insecurities to make myself feel better and then I went to like don't give a fuck right mm -hmm. but then I then I went through that for long enough you know and, and I remember it hit me again in my like early 30s and I remember going wow you know even though I don't and I know that I'm not attaching myself to these materialistic things there are certain things that I I appreciate about them, and I do notice, and I even notice the way it makes me feel when I feel good about myself. And I think anybody who's ever put themselves in a tuxedo, mm -hmm. you know, and you just feel good I right after hate that. Tuxedos. <laughs> I think I think the 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 pendulum swung for you. Like on one end, it was over here motivated yeah, by insecurity. Then you rejected it because you're like, fuck that, which is common, and right? Now, That's where I'm getting with this. Yeah, and now it probably reflects you more. Yes, like, this is more true. Yes, who you are, right? I, you know, it's funny because it's a weird market now. Like, you know what's interesting? We're lucky in, in some senses. In some senses, we're unlucky because we grew up in a generation that didn't have tech like, like we have now, so it's kind of foreign to us. Mm -hmm. But we also got to see this crazy transition, and we're young enough to see and be aware of the transition. Like, like the generation before us is so fucking unaware of it, so we're a little more aware of it. But I'll give you guys a good example. Like, when we were kids, if you were smart, if you were yeah, it wasn't a nerd, cool. it wasn't cool. You were beat, you were punked, yeah. you were bullied, you were fucking no chicks wanted to date you. Yeah, like it was a bad thing. Yeah. Now, if you're smart, if you're the kid that's on the computer making cool programs and doing shit, this and, wasn't that long ago. That was only about ten years ago. We trait. went we went to that nerd transition where being a nerd was cool, and everybody was wearing the glasses to look like a nerd, even though Dude, you didn't need to wear glasses. Nerds, like, nerds, it, it took rule, this whole nerds rule the fucking word. Elon Musk, have you seen Elon Musk? Like. Forget what he's done. If you just don't even think about what the fucker's done. Like, the guy's brilliant as shit. Probably one of the most desired men on the planet. It's true. You talk to any woman, they'll be like, oh my God, Elon Musk. He's so. The guy's a, he's a, he's a classic nerd, but be, because the, the thing, times have changed, nerds rule the world. He's kind of his own self. He doesn't really care what he says, he just says what he says. He's eccentric to a certain degree. And now that's like this attractive thing. And you're starting mm. to see it a little bit on. Like social media, you're starting to see like the weird, like the weird people who are kind of authentic. They get like the, they get the passion. Now fitness takes a little longer, I think. It's always behind yeah. on some of these trends, but you're starting to see it with fitness well, too. We're trying to create a whole new genre, right? The the nerds that lift, that actually have muscle on their body. I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't even think it's so much nerd because I'm probably the most nerdy, right? right. Uh, I, I think it's just the. We'll let, you, it's we'll, we'll let you win that one. Uh, yeah, it's easy. It's an easy contest. It's <laughs> yeah. it's. I think it's just the uh, like just be real. I don't know. You know, be kind of who you I, are. I, that's what I I think. What I I, I yeah. you know, if I go back to when I first met you guys, I think that 
um, you know, how authentic you were. And then the, the, I, I'm, I, I'm always uh, attracted to people, you know, male or female, that have this self awareness, oh, yeah. self awareness <laughs> about them. Hmm. Um, it's just a, it, it's a, a team v- player. It's a very unique quality to find in in people. Period. Uh, and then in your like genre or your field, I mean, that's even crazier. So, uh, you, you guys, know, you guys are that rare. And because I, and I know, I think to- Tony Robbins, I think talks a lot about this, about finding, I believe it's him. Uh, somebody, I'm sure somebody will fucking inbox me and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, it was it, for sure. Uh, like your, he's, uh, your, your goal in life is to find this platform that it, it will just continue to elevate you. And that seems like obvious, right? When you say that, but when, when you really think about like where a lot of people find themselves, they find themselves in this nine to five with the same yeah. 10 to 15 people they see every day. They're all about the same intelligence level. They're all about the same growth minded. They talk about the same things every day and they get stuck in this pattern and, you know, it, it's and there's nothing wrong with that. To each their own, and if that's how that, that's how you want to live. But I'm 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 very much so attracted to people that are growth minded, that are self aware, because it pushes me to that next level. And I don't know, each level's each level's more awesome. Just like that's why as 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 years go by, like I don't, I, dude. Like, I'll tell 35 you, thirty five was better than thirty four. I'll tell you, coming forward better than thirty. You know, for, from for me personally, coming from uh, where I came from, being as insecure as I was about. Uh, just what motivated me to work out, right? Were my body image issues coming through that and out of that. And let me, I'm, I mean, it's, it's a constant journey because I think, uh, finding your true self never ends because your true self changes and the more layers you uncover, the more layers you end up finding. And it's just, it's just this, it becomes addicting. I'll be honest with mm-hmm. you. It becomes this awesome thing, but it sucks. It's hard too. At the same time, every time you shed a layer, it's, it's usually shed through un- being uncomfortable and being in, in some pain. It doesn't happen when you're super comfortable and feeling awesome. Always happens when you're feeling shit. Or you about. rediscover parts of yourself that you know, you've know you squelched in, in your process to become more knowledgeable or successful in your endeavors. There's like a whole creative side that you had that you're just like, holy shit, that's where, that's where that was. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you, I, you know, coming from being insecure about my body for years, for years, it was so bad, and the the thing is, you're not aware of it when you're in it. But it was so bad, it it I, it drew, it literally drove me to create this identity that became who I was, yeah. which was about as far away from my true self as I could get because it, it's totally not me. None of that was me, but that's who I became because of this 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 painful insecurity coming out of that, coming through that, uh, really becoming who I was. It's so. It was very painful, but it was also uh, it's also very awesome because it's the closer you get to who you truly are, mm. the more comfortable you get with everybody else, or just with life. And you know, it's funny going through painful situations like my divorce. Boy, did that test me! Like I was never really insecure about the car I drove until I got divorced. All of a sudden, I was single for a little while, and I was like, "Oh fuck, I need to get a cool car, right?" Mm. Because, and then I thought to myself, like, you know, would I really want to date someone? who was attracted to me because of my car? No. Actually, the kind of people I'm attracted to don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. And it's fine if you are. I'm not talking shit. Just me personally. If I'm talking to a girl and she's like, ooh, that's a nice, that's a cool car. I really like that. Or that's a turnoff for me. So I'm like, wait a minute. Why would I even want to attract that? So that was a challenge for a second. Having children, holy shit, that was a huge uh, period of growth and continues to be a huge period of growth to the point where... The things that I find challenging uh, with my children are my own projections of what I used to find challenging as a kid, which is, it's insane. Like when I see my kid uh, volunteer to sign up for these group sports and want to play on these teams, I get nervous. Why do I get nervous? Because I didn't want to do that shit when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. He fucking is oblivious. There's nothing nervous about it for him at all. He's having a great time. Fuck, his volleyball team is winning, winning games. But for me... I feel this old feeling. Wow. It's an old feeling that I had when I was a kid. That's going to be a trip. Surface, it's a fucking trip. Oh, yeah. Because realizing that makes me realize... Do you, I'm gonna, do you I'm find yourself it? having to catch yourself because you totally. want to say something to him? That's, totally. Yeah. And then you realize it's an insecurity. You know what's from funny? You, how, I wanna, many, how many dads actually father their kid that way? Every, all, all of them. Right. I want to. All of them. <laughs> they identify themselves through their kids. I want to. The I want to like preemptively talk to my kid about shit that I think is bother, is going to bother him. And then I realize like, my, like you might create like, that. He probably doesn't even that. have a problem with it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, no. dude, Jessica pointed that I out. She's like, that she's like, why are you going to have that talk with 
your son, like, it might not even be an issue for him. And I'm yeah. like, holy fuck. Or like, let I, him experience it first. Yeah, like, I'm, have a I'm preemptively, like, pro- trying to, pr- like, predict, project yeah. what's going to happen because that's what happened with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When in reality, that's not a fucking issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fucking, it's really crazy. It's eye-opening. It does definitely make you reflect on what kind of insecurities and things you dealt with growing up, you know, like, as you watch your, your kids kind of, like, Have you guys made process. a mistake? Have you made a mistake that you uh, uh, that you can remember, like, that, like, recently where uh, you, you told you told him something and you went, ah, oh, fuck, that dude, was I totally... Could, I could write a list hmm. of mistakes that oh, I, I make yeah. on a regular basis, you know, from that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, to, you know, I'll say... Like I'll bring up teamwork and, you know, it's good to be a part of a team. Like I'll overdo it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck am I saying? Like this is not even something I need to be talking about. There's obviously no issue here. Yeah, yeah. There's no issue whatsoever. Why am I bringing this up? And it's because I'm I'm trying to preemptively, you know, squash this insecurity that I had. Mm-hmm. That I have with the whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so it's God, so how many parents fucking struggle with that, dude? Mm-hmm. Dude, so so they have to, right? Moms and dads. I'll it's see already that. hard it's already hard enough to 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 reflect on yourself and your own insecurities. Then when you got to see it through your kid and you start you don't even really in your head you probably don't think you're projecting it on him unless you have incredible awareness. Bro, I you I already tr- have to you already have to have really good awareness about yourself before you realize that you're projecting it on your child. It's cr- I tried having this conversation with my ex the other day because she is all about like, "Oh, I get to take, you know, my daughter to this you know princess movie because it's 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 princesses and she'll love it and this and that. And my daughter could give a fuck about <laughs> princesses. She really could. She likes unicorns and she likes jumping and she likes making funny faces and fart noises. Like that's, <laughs> that's like awesome. my daughter is my daughter is a comedian. She's got this ability. She's got this total like doesn't care if she makes funny faces. Mm-hmm. Like she's not like oh my god I'm gonna look funny. Like you'll see a lot of little girls do. Like my daughter will get up and make a joke and laugh, and it's great. I love it. Uh, but and, but you know she's trying to project onto her mm-hmm. this like oh no princesses and, and dresses and stuff. And it's like but that's not like that's yeah. not her. Like she doesn't care about about that kind of stuff. Well, I mean I I kind of vocalized my struggle with with the whole sports thing and that was a big identity identity for me growing up like i identified being on a team and being the best on the team and like that was like always something i strive to be so to to watch and, and try to introduce like certain sports and to to get them rallied around these sports and and to get that kind of experience i was pressing and i was pressing it so hard to happen and, and really forced it early you know and like i i my wife had to kind of check me uh, sometimes and, and be like, look, you know, he's only like five, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, <laughs> you're right. You know, like when did you start playing? And I was just like, ah, maybe it was like seven, you know, or maybe it was nine. Like, and I just started to realize I'm like, oh my God, I wanted this so bad. I was like hammering this like in his throat early. You know, and like he's probably not even ready for it. You know, <laughs> he wants to, he wants to run around and, and, and shoot like Nerf guns and and just you know play and then and build stuff and that's what he's into you know and so it's like i don't know it, there there's definitely my own i, I could see my own in, intent there where i was like trying to recreate like a childhood experience that i definitely went through. oh of course i could you know how i know that it has to be so apparent because I don't even have a kid, and I think like, man, if I had a boy though, like he would be this. I would already be yeah. teaching him. I'd teach him this. He's, this he's gonna be team captain. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get him in this school. <laughs> yeah, he's Ima- gonna do this. Ima- imagine this. Imagine Adam, if you had a kid. Let's say you had a son, and he was uh, introverted, mm. um, didn't really care about leading, you know, any teams. He just likes to, you know, he likes to read, do his own thing, uh, just kind of be quiet and whatever. Like. How would that, you know, how would that feel for you, right? Yeah, because yeah. you'd want it. You, I know it. I know what you value in yourself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if your kid displays different characteristics, it's like you have to. That's the thing. Like you have to part of raising your kids. Actually, a big part of raising your kids is actually dealing with your own shit. That's probably most of it, yeah. to be honest with you. Most of it is dealing with your own shit. Oh, because, and not reacting, right? Dude, it's let them be their own person. Um, and in order for you, to, in order for you to have the ability to do that, you have to be comfortable with you and who you are as a person. Otherwise, without you realizing it, you'll 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 try to force upon your child things that you. 
think are, you know, and, and again, of course you want your kid to be a good kid. That's different, but there's characteristics that you may value Do you, or sound, you may fear. When you when you say it like that, it almost sounds like you have a different perspective, almost like you come from a coaching perspective instead of like a, you know, like this authoritarian or a parent, right? Like you are more like trying to coach them through life, you know, more ver- and guide them versus I'm trying to tell you or parent you. I think that's the the kind of the mentality authority you know authoritarian type parenting has major uh has major flaws now yeah, i was raised that way yeah me too i was raised that way I, obviously my family's but you know the argument always is oh well you tur- look how great you turned out you know so, you know so that's well the- you know why just like we talk about fitness and nutrition there's these big rocks the big things that are important i got i got lots of love i my parents were my, my family was very loving very supportive um you know, in their own ways, but they were always supportive. Like I knew I could, if I did something that my parents, you know, didn't like, but as long as I wasn't hurting anybody, they would definitely turn around and support me. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of that. Um, very, very loving family, uh, always very close, you know, uh, lots of uh, physical affection. So there was never that weirdness, especially with my dad. He was okay with hugging and kissing us. Like that, the important stuff was there. So don't get me wrong. That's you get that stuff. Uh, then the other stuff is can definitely influence influence a few things. But once you get that stuff, you're good. Like again, you could flip the reverse and do all the great coaching in the world. But if you don't love your kids and hug them and kiss them and well, show them I that, think, they're, they're gonna they're gonna have problems. Yeah, I think just thinking about it, the the main goal as, as you become a parent, and I, I might just be speaking for myself, is to to try and improve upon your experience, right? Uh, getting raised and like, and I know that my parents tried to improve upon their experience of how they were raised. And it, it seems like this almost a, a duty to then absorb, you know, that like the, the knowledge and the, 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 what you've learned from that process. And then now kind of understand a little bit deeper, like, okay, that's really how that affected me when, you know, my dad cornered me and, and told me, to do this, this specific way, or like used fear for this. Whereas I probably will try not to use that tactic, but, but there was a lot of great, just like Sal mentioned, like there's, I mean, there's, there's the main sort of a a guiding structure that, um, you know, that, that, that creates the foundation for it. So um, it's just really kind of like tweaking the knobs and then, and then figuring out like your own process with your own kids and then, and tuning into their personalities and what's going to, What's going to give them uh, the tool set to to then go and, and make better better decisions by themselves? I'll tell you what. I had a client that I trained for a while who I just – there's a few people that I've met in my life where I see them with their kids. First of all, I've told you guys before, uh, if I see someone with their kids and they're great with their kids, I instantly like them. I just, I just do. If I see someone with children and they're good with them, especially if it's their own children, um, you know, it's just automatically I feel like this, this is a good person. Because I feel like people who are good with their own children with other kids can't be a bad person. I'm sure that's not true, but that's just how I feel. And there's a few people I've met where I look at and I go, wow, I, I'm really learning from that person. Actually, Doug is one of them. Doug is an amazing father um, to his daughter. And I had another client who I, he brought his kid in a few times to work out. And I just saw the relationship that they had when he would train, when, when we would work out. And I was just like, man, he hasn't like, he hasn't, he's, he's such a good job of talking to her that she he she she listens rather than because she's fearful for getting punished or whatever like he wasn't mm-hmm. authoritative he talked to her like she was a human being like she had a brain and it was it was kind of mind blowing to me because again i was raised very authoritarian so uh, at the time my 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 daughter i don't think she was even born my son was real real young and we're having a conversation his daughter is just this beautiful little girl and i joked around and i'm like oh man you know it's going to be trouble when she's a teenager she's so pretty you know and he made a comment like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure she'll probably have a lot of sex or something like that. And I was like, <gasps> you know, like, <laughs> like dude, isn't that going to isn't that gonna fucking piss like, wow, you off? this guy, yeah. And I'm like, isn't that going to yeah, fucking, like, you're going to beat those guys up, right? And he's like, why? I'm like, what? And he's like, listen, he goes, definitely if she's comfortable with her body and herself and she's doing things for the right reason and she's not trying to get love or trying to seek attention. And he was explaining to me, he's like, look, most kids – who are comfortable with themselves or whatever, they'll have sex right around the late teens, usually. He goes, and but if they're comfortable with themselves, it's not a destructive thing. And he goes, I want my daughter to be very comfortable with her, who she is, her sexuality, and I want her to have really good sex. 
And I thought about it, and my internal instinct was to be like, "What the fuck? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? Danger!" I'm, I'm like, yeah. "You you want your daughter to have good sex?" And I'm yeah. like, "Wait a minute, you don't want your daughter to have talk about bad serious sex. ownership wow. on him feeling." That's, it, a, that's another level. It is another level because you know what? That's him really owning that he knows he's gonna he's gonna impact that right now. How she acts 15, 16, 17, 18 years well, old. Well, even with, when she's a teenager, he's yeah. going to talk to her about sex. Not like it's a dirty thing, but like it's a normal thing. And that she needs to be okay with knowing what she likes. And she needs to be okay with knowing what feels good. But she also needs to be secure with herself in the sense where she's not trying to get attention with it. She's not trying to seek approval with it. She's not trying to get someone to love her through using sex. Because those are all negative ways no, negative and most, and most common, right? Right. And a lot of those that we don't realize, a lot of those negative associations with sex, this was mind-blowing for me, come from thinking sex is a dirty, bad thing. And when he said that, like, I want my daughter to have really good sex. And I thought to myself, and I'm like, well, of course. Like, you don't want your kid to have bad sex. Bad sex. <laughs> you don't want your kid to be so... Like, have this uh, what are we going to title this, Doug? I don't know. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you know, it's, you know, we get uncomfortable. Make sure with your it. kids have good sex. No, we, no, we get, a, we get uncomfortable Actually, with it. Actually, that would be a great title. Uh, we get uncomfortable with it, but think about it. Like, I know. Like, you don't want your kid to have, because this is my culture, okay? Old school Sicilian Catholic culture is, especially with girls, we teach them sex is bad. Mm -hmm. We teach them it's dirty. It's the old Puritan it's a uh, sin. mindset. Yeah. It's a sin. Do you know how fucked up? You, you know how fucked up you make your little kid, especially your, I'm sorry, not your little kid, but your daughter in particular, you know how fucked up you make them over that? In fact, boys too, because in the Catholic culture, right, it's bad, it's all, you know, you end up getting this kind of distorted view of what it is and it's not healthy. So then you get these girls who grow up, maybe they did everything their parents told them and they waited till they were married to have sex and they probably got married a little early because they wanted to have sex and they thought, right. well, this is what, I, they married the wrong motherfucker He's a horrible husband. Had they have shitty sex? She has problem orgasming. Orgasming. She doesn't want to do certain things in sex because they're dirty. So their sex life is this very weird, restrictive, you know, unhealthy situation. Maybe he cheats on her as a result. Maybe she later on gets a divorce, becomes extra promiscuous now because she's trying to discover. Like, think of all the ways you could fuck that shit up. Because you have, and for me, this was fucking mind blowing because yeah, it's a snowball that's, effect. Because that's how I was raised, and my instinct. I'm not going to be honest. I'm, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not going to lie. Like I have a daughter, and for sure, I don't want to think about her, you know, sleeping with anybody, even if she's fucking 19, 20, 21. I don't want to think. I don't want no dudes coming. That's my instinct because that's how I was raised. But in reality. Like I want her to be comfortable with herself, know what she wants. Know she's going to do it no matter what. No matter what, the way right. you raise her, the way you raise her. Okay. And the morals that you teach her, the more you communicate with her, that is going to dictate her her decision making more than anything else. And you want it to come from that place, from a good place. To me, it was it was very. I went. I was the guy. I was the boy who you know. I signed a purity card when I was a kid. Yeah. You know. I so I that. I did lived, that do you any good? No, no. It was it, it, harmful. It, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You you. And then, and then afterwards, you know, I went on a tear afterwards because <laughs> I was so, you know, and that's, you don't realize that, yeah. you know, you don't realize that in your head and you have this relationship with like, it's so wrong, it's so right, it's so wrong. I, I have so many people that I know that are connected to me that, and exactly what you said, they married at such an early age because yeah, when you're fucking 21 and you're not yeah. having sex, you're it's Jones normal, it. yeah. it's normal to do that. So you're, you're going to marry the first person that you think you want to have sex with and that's who you end up with. And you know what? Sometimes it works out and it's amazing and I think that's awesome for those people that it happened but it's definitely not the majority and it's not even close to like a, 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 it's, it's like literally Dude, like it becomes, less than 15% it's not there's not a really good chance it's it becomes destructive and what you. happens what happens to boys in this culture is we end up viewing and I know this because again I lived in it right we end up viewing women as either wife material or girls you have sex with like there isn't, there's no both. It's the, it's what do they call it? The, the Madonna something complex where you have, and I know this because in the old culture and these old cultures, men have their wife that they have normal sex with and they, no, 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 she doesn't do that. That's the mouth that kisses my children. I've heard men say this before, but then on the side, they go bang the girl. That's a freak. And that's how they, they have to separate it that way. They can't have that connection with their wife because in their mind, that's dirty. And then for girls who grew up in that situation, they never have, they have trouble enjoying sex because the second they enjoy it and they let loose, shame, guilt. Yeah. Like, you know, 
I know women. I know people. In, in, like I said, grow up in this, this situation where the women they won't have sex doggy style. They they don't like they won't do blowjobs. They won't let their husbands go down on them because that's all dirty. So all we do is we do like that's some twisted that's some twisted fucked up shit that causes it actually creates perversions. It creates dysfunction, and mm-hmm. that's just one category. But it was fucking mind blowing for me yeah. to, to hear that kind of stuff. And so definitely having kids. How old how old were your kids when you heard that? I don't even think how, my, how long ago was that? A long time ago. Oh, it was so, a long time ago. Yeah, so my boy was very, very young. I don't even think my daughter was born yet. And it was it was like, again, that, that was mind-blowing for me because sex is one of those topics that was so taboo. Oh, yeah. Like, growing up, it was just... And it was weird, too. Getting After I got married, all of a sudden, my parents were like, we can talk about sex now. I'm like, no, we can't. Like, we never talked about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to talk about this you shit You can't now. open that door now. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. That closed it's, a while ago. It's funny, too, because my son, uh, you know, he go they, he's at the age now where they go through the... Um, what is that? The sex education course? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fifth or sixth grade. Yeah, and so my ex-wife was brought up in a very, very similar culture to mine, and so the sex is bad and whatever. She could not have this conversation with him. Like you're supposed to talk with your kids because they send a paper home that you're going to sign, and then they're going to learn about this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to sit down and have this conversation with your kid. Also, she couldn't do it. I I was the one that went and did it because for her it was like so embarrassing and so. And I'm thinking like this is like a totally normal thing. Like you need to have this yeah. conversation. So you know, luckily I was able to do it with him, and we talked about everything. And it's funny because you think your kid's going to be like ooh or yeah. oh, but he doesn't know any better. And he's like, really? That's how uh, it works. That's and how okay. it happens. Yeah. 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 No, I I would imagine they're actually genuinely interested. Probably what totally. you would be like if you know, because you're curious right. at that age and you're not sure. And then having someone who you trust and love and look up to, you know, explain that to you is probably the best person to do it. And the ones that fight that and fight that conversation and push that away, that kid's going to have that conversation. And if you don't, if you don't figure out how to do it, he's going to, he or she is going to go do it with probably someone you don't want them to have yeah. that conversation with well, just and seeing, giving them advice. Or the internet. Yeah. yeah. They'll learn it from porn. Yeah. There was such a disconnect there to like with the communication process. And I think that really highlights that because I mean, it, culturally, like growing up, like it just seems like that nobody talked about it, you know, and, and it just became this thing that like everybody's like so secretive about the process of it. And so, you know, even for us, like growing up, I'm like always asking like somebody's older brother, you know, and I'm like trying to get all this information. And then, then you get like, oh, look at that porn, or it just becomes this thing. It's so taboo. You know, if we just had a like a normal conversation about it, 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 it's a lot like how I look at alcohol as well. So if it's, if it's never in there and like, oh my God, you can never have it and like only drunk losers or whatever, like instead of just having this with dinner and just being casual and chill about it, you got to so, ask yourself such a different contrast. Cause now, cause I'm, I'm now my my son's getting to the age where we're going to talk about, you know, drugs. I want to have these conversations cuz these are things he's going to be exposed to. Anyway, right? He's going to be exposed at some point wh- whether it's in college or even in high school where he's going to hear about these things or see, you know, see these things. Maybe they're going to you know pass in front of him, right? And I think as a parent, you like we want to our biggest fear is oh no, they're going to try drugs, right? That's our biggest fear. So I want to keep them completely away from ever doing them again. But then you got to think to yourself like, okay, the reality is uh, that they're going to be at some point, you're not going to be around. They're not going to be in this sheltered you know, structure. They're going to see the drugs and they may in fact make the decision to try them and which you want to tell them never to do that again. But then I also think to myself, okay, uh, let's think of all the drugs that they're going to try and that I'd never, I probably won't have a problem with. At some point, he's going to drink wine. Am I going to freak out over that? No. Is wine very? Can wine be very dangerous? Well, I yes. think for caffeine. I mean, what about medications? Like, what about just talking to your kid and being honest about things? Like, yeah. the, the, like the conversation I'm going to have. with Yeah, them. but here's the thing, though, and I know where you're where you're going because I feel like I feel like you can do this. Because you, I mean, I already know if I was you, I know exactly how I would say this to my kid because you can break it down yeah. on a molecular level what right. each thing is doing to them. And I would do that. I would communicate that so they understand like this is what's chemically happening to you. This is what's going on with your brain. This is what's going on with your stomach. This is what's going on with all those things. These are the risks if you do too much. Like You could lay that out to them and then quite frankly, they're going to make that decision whether they're going to or not. And yeah, but I think it's a valid strategy to start like that, like caffeine, and then you kind of progress and you mm-hmm. go alcohol. You know, it's like 
you're presenting it in a way where I'm educating like to my kids why why I drink coffee and why this is something that you know I I tend to do frequently. Wow, wait when they make that connection on you guys, right? Yeah, because they're already do that's gonna gonna happen. They they do they do really early too. They're like, oh, dad needs his coffee, you know, and and I'm just like, oh shit, you know, like it's really eye opening, like how much they see your patterns, and uh, so it's better to communicate, uh, you know, the real reason why I'm drinking the coffee. Just be like, it's okay to be. On, like don't lie to your kids because at some point they're gonna figure out that you're full of shit yeah like like <laughs> yeah. everybody's I, I, when I, when we were kids okay let's stay on the topic of sex and drugs right sex is dirty and drugs are horrible and they make you go crazy and they fry your brain yeah. then you discover sex feels good and drugs feel good <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> So I, I remember just think, mind blown, right? Well, and you're a kid and you first experience it. Well, like, I, rem- I remember thi- all this. I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> they lied like, to me, son yeah, of a bitch. And, and by, look, by, I'm gonna be like, by no means do I have any desire yeah. to try crack. Okay, crack cocaine. I have zero desire to ever try it. I never will. There's definitely, you know, whatever. But you know, when people tell me crack makes you go crazy, it's a horrible thing. Whatever. Why are so many people doing it? It's, it probably feels good. Like, it's okay to be honest and say to your kid, like, well, you know, because here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell my kid all the dangers of drugs, and you know what their answer is going to be or what they're going to say? Why do people do them then? Mm-hmm. What's my fucking answer going to be? People are crazy. I'm going to tell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. That's stupid. I'm going to tell them because it feels good. Because they're homeless and crazy. Yeah. yeah, it feels good when they do it. That's why they get this this temporary feeling of it feels great. Like, yeah. It's okay to be honest with your kids and and understand that they're going to be they're, they're going to have to make some of these decisions and the best thing you could do is educate them honestly so that they have the right tools to make those so decisions. So now with that in mind it's a little bit off topic but you know what the biggest struggle for me is to to keep this sort of mystery atta- like for instance with like Christmas and Santa Claus and then Easter bunny and all that shit you know like I just can't I can't like play into the to the drama and, and like present it in a way that like i believable at all and they, they they're like oh, they, they don't they don't they already don't believe in santa claus is what i'm saying yeah and i, and I like i really want them to like experience like the magic and the, the, all that shit i can't do it dude it's like that's such a struggle for me and just like yeah santa claus he's coming and uh, uh, you know i so what i don't get into it so what i did with that was i when i told my 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 boy actually he kind of figured it out and then he's like well why you know, yeah. like, why'd you guys make this? Why'd you guys do that? <laughs> choose fairy? Like, fuck yeah. you, dad. And, yeah. I, and I told <laughs> him, and I said, yeah. I said, do you, do you, how fun was it when you thought that these are the things uh, that were I happening? See. I said, it's just a fun, yeah. it's a very fun game it, 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 for your children. You, It's fun because everybody has a good time with it. I pretend like it's happening. It's, it's a lot of fun. When you get older, we explain to you what's going on. And it's something that you can continue with their little sister and you get to see her get excited. But then as kids get older, they, they figure it out and it's not a big deal. But it's just one of those things that we do that's a lot of fun as part of the holiday. And that's it is I try to maintain the magic. Right? It is kind it, of it's weird. It's really hard for that. me internally. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It, we like do I'm that. conflicted do about it. Yeah, I've never, I've never thought of that as being a parent. Like I thought it'd be easy. You know, to just like put the Santa Claus suit on or like eat a little cookie and, you know, do this. And I'm just like, this is so weird. Dude, you know what? Dude, my best friend's parents. So I used to have Christmas morning with my best friend's family for a lot of my Christmases growing up. And I remember his his mom and dad, they used to uh, walk in. They used to put flour oh, yeah. on the bottom of their boots and they <laughs> walk, walk with flour all through. So you th- <laughs> as a kid, you don't even make the connection that it's not snow. <laughs> They're just like, Whoa. It's just so funny how like when you think back, you're like, yeah. <laughs> give, give it, <laughs> giving that it was flour. That should have given you. know what's such funny? bullshit. Like, I, I feel so conflicted about it. You know, you know what? It's funny. Yeah. It, there's so many things that are accepted uh, because they're part of our society and culture. But if you like... If you eliminate that, which is very difficult to do, but if you're objective and you cut out the like, I was raised that way and that's just the way it is part, mm-hmm. and you look at, there's a lot of stuff that's bullshit. Like, what? Yeah. like if you think about it, I, I, I hate to say this because this is actually hitting me right now. Why, the, why don't we just tell our kids, hey, tonight when you go to bed, I'm going to put a surprise present out for you and then when you wake up, you're going to see it. That's fucking cool too. That is cool too. <laughs> why, that, that's uh, really what happens. Why do we got to make up some believable. shit? And this whole elf it's on the weird. shelf thing, dude. Wait, what the fuck? Elf on the got, shelf. I, yeah, what is I that? I gotta make. You know I gotta is? make believe. Like what? This what is elf that? I've never even heard of this. So uh, it's, oh and they God. totally bought into it. How too, long? How many way. days is it? Four thirty or something it's, like that. It's like the beginning of December. Now. I feel so, so left out right now. So Both the beginning you know about of this, some shit like you kidding me, dude? Elf on the shelf. The last five, maybe six years. It's become a thing. It's been a thing. Who started it? Where it come from? Some lady, dude. It didn't happen when we were kids, but some brilliant fucking person. I think we're pissed. We invented this and sold a bunch of these elf things. 
thing is what I think. Yeah. And it's like this little toy elf uh, that you put throughout the house and it's a different day every day of the month leading up to Christmas right. and the elf is watching you is what it he's is. He's watching you. He's so. watching you. But then you do funny <laughs> Which things. Which is brilliant because then it's like, you know, they feel like this extra conscience to be good. You know, yeah. so you kind of leverage that a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, oh. It sounds like my I son's didn't, didn't think about that. You just yeah, take yeah. it to another level right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, his elf's <laughs> name's Pokio and so I was like, oh, dude, Pokio, you know, he's watching. <laughs> You're not gonna eat that broccoli. What are you gonna, yeah, see, but didn't think about it. like <laughs> you know what, what happens when they're like, "Oh, nothing's watching me." Yeah, yeah. Think about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's some fucked up shit. But you, yeah. you, I guess you put it up every. I didn't do it on my kids. I, I fucking that's. I rebelled. I'm like, this is okay. One so more finish, yeah, finish good, how this good all works. For you. So you good didn't finish. So you put the, I'm, so you, I'm in deep. So you every day you put it in a different spot and you make it and it's in the elf is mischievous and he yeah. gets into things. So like. You know, and he freezes. I had him fighting like Star Wars characters and all kinds. Yeah, of Yeah, so you do all these things like, oh, he got into the sugar, or he got into the candy, or he's trying yeah. to open the presents, or, or he took a poop, in, you know, in the the candle over here. Or yeah, yeah, and you do all these different things every day, and the kids wake up and then they look for the elf, uh, and when they see the elf, then they see what he's gotten into. So it's this whole thing that leads up. Into yeah, Christmas. you kind of create this oh whole storyline leading so up to brilliant. it. It's so brilliant. It's it's it totally is brilliant. Dude. I, I didn't we even, need to think I of something even, like that. I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. In the best one. Did okay, you know so that one of my best ones. You so did? I have I have one of those Wi-Fi speakers, you know, and so um, I had him like sitting on top of the speaker, and I'm like, you know, and it, and I had this like note saying something like, um, you know, like. I'll play music if I want your attention or you're, you're doing something I don't like. Oh, I know what you did. Yeah. Talk so, <laughs> so I had it, so I had it on my phone. I have the app, right? So he'd just be doing something. He, he'd be like wrestling too hard, punching his brother or something. Then I turned, you know, the music, the, the Christmas music on and I'm just like, Oh yeah. <laughs> and he's like, and he stops like mid whatever he's doing. He's like, Oh no. And then he just is totally good. It's amazing. <laughs> you manipulative oh, little fucker. It was amazing. I was like, I want to do this every day. Dude, let's break this down for a second. Yeah. Let's break this down. So, because I would do that shit with my kids too. I didn't use Elf on a Shelf, but I had this phone number I could call on my cell phone where Santa Claus's fucking voicemail <laughs> pops up. And they'd be like, I'm going to leave them. I'm going to tell them what oh, you're doing. Oh, oh, be good. Think, yeah. yeah, exactly. Think right. about it this way. Like, A, your kid is behaving better for a <laughs> for fucking Santa fake, for a super stupid. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? Than yeah. they are for you. It's and, always somebody else. They behave and, like awesome. And the reason why they're behaving better is not because the, the what they're doing is good. Because they're going to get something. It's because yes. yes. they yes. want the toy. Yeah, yeah. They, Manipulating. Yeah. Do you really want to raise? Think about this now. This I is know. fucking blowing it's, me away. It's, it's messed I love up. having a pin, like, yeah. like, like I love having these big blo- you know, breakthroughs on air. Yeah. Think about it. Do you want your kid to do the right thing because they're afraid of getting punished, or because they want a gift, or they or do get you want, something for it, yeah. or do you want them to do the right thing because they understand? Yeah, because it's, it's who the they right are. Thing. Does it yeah. count? Does it actually count if they do it because of fear? I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't it does. count. No. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything about their character. No. What no. are you setting them up for? And it's and it's rolling the dice on which way their character is going to go because of it. Right? Very uh, true. Which it, it, not saying that it couldn't go good because of it. That you could uh, have done it in such a fun manner and taught them so well that they teach it to their kids with good intentions and yet and he turns into this great thing. But then it could also you know what's funny turn into I a major actually, insecurity or complex. Yeah. Or, I actually think the reason why people grow up to be good people. Is is because of the knowing they're doing good things because they're good, in spite of all the bullshit that we do. I don't think anybody has become yeah. a good person because Santa Claus, Elf on the Shelf, or or, <laughs> or, or, or that other shit. I think that, be, that doesn't last. That's why it's magic. No, I think if anything, <laughs> yeah. that's just they did it in spite of those types of things. And what happens is it's just like diet. Like it's like eating a certain way because I don't want to get fat, not because I love my body and I love myself. Right. At some point you go off the wagon. Look, how many, how many people do we know went to college who were raised super fucking strict and went to college or away from their parents and just went ape shit. Uh Uh-huh. Went freshman ape shit. fifteen, ape shit with everything: <laughs> sex, alcohol, drugs, fucking oh, yeah. food, like like savage beasts. And a lot of people don't recover from that. There's yeah. a lot of people that I know, yeah, I know, who ended up uh, addicts or alcoholics or you know just horrible or because just riddled with STDs. Just horrible, because, yeah. <laughs> just, just just probably just the most common one of, of, of riddled, you know, just just horrible rashes. <laughs> just, and, yeah, what is, I'm uh, envisioning riddled with STDs. Yeah. Also, it's just yeah. like fuck. 
fuck? What did I do? <laughs> Riddle me this. No, you know, I, I never saw this. It? What is that bright spot on my dick? They didn't talk about this in fifth grade. Oh, oh. my God. You imagine you get your list from the doctor, yeah. and you're like, oh, fuck, I have Was it like shankers? Everything. Is shankers a thing? <laughs> What's that? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember Does all these like, obscure again? like diseases I remember going through Shank- sex ed. Shankers? Yeah, it was like this one. It like, looked like you had to part, have of that skin, you- <laughs> part of your skin was gone, you know, and, and, like on your shaft. Oh, oh my like, god! Ah, I just remember it burned in my head, and I was like, "Oh my god, I don't want that." Yeah, you accidentally <laughs> yeah. gave yourself shankers yeah. by jerking off too much. Yeah, or the warts, <laughs> all, all those warts. God, those pictures. Oh, no, uh, I was just thinking, horrible. When did when did the does the dare program still going on? Uh, Is that still exist? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I thought I saw. I think some it's more like mothers against drunk driving. That's kind of like the move. Mad, now. yeah, mad. They did, did. They've gotten from dare to mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dare to be mad. I dare to be mad. I thought I saw them still going. I think they still are. I, that's what I think is, uh, that's the, you know, when I go back to a memory, I can remember a police officer coming into our, our classroom. I had to have been, fuck, this has to be third, fourth, or fifth. At the fifth of the latest, but I think it was more third or fourth. Coming in and remember the, the, the briefcases they had? That unfolded, and there through. was like drugs and shit. Yes, there? and yeah. then a, a picture of every drug, <laughs> and then they, then they had a video to go with it. Like what? This like, I haven't thought of that. There's a people that do years. LSD yeah. jump off trains. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People Here's your brain do. on drugs, and then they drop like yes. eggs onto a fryer. Yes. Right? So LSD like, makes you jump off. That's buildings. what your brain does. Whoa! Yeah. You know, my mom told me that when I was a kid. She was, she's like, I would, because I, I asked her, like, what's mom? What's LSD? And she's like, oh, it's just. It makes you go crazy. She's yeah. like, people will do this drug and then they'll be scared in the corner because they feel like they think they're an orange and, and they never come them. back. She like make yeah. she like tell me these stories and I yeah. and I would think as a kid, I'm like, why the fuck would anybody <laughs> do this? this? But then so- you watch a Disney movie and you're like, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, like <laughs> yeah. why why all of a sudden are they having these awesome dreams and they're all like you know bright colors Dude, and seriously think about know. all the phobias and fears you have as an adult because of the bullshit that you were told. When you were a kid, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? I was just, God. I was just talking to um, I can't remember her name right now. Anyways, author of this great book, and she's a psychologist, right? And she's going into all these different things, and she was uh, talking about like that five to seven years, the five to seven year range, right there. Like so much of your adult, you know, personality and character is stemmed from that Mm -hmm. one way or another and it could be a positive way it could be a negative way it could be a neutral move but like it comes from those and it's whatever and i i've tried i've trained myself to like anytime i i find like a shift in my emotion so like if i and that's for for good too so if all of a sudden i get way over the top excited or i get depressed or i get frustrated or i get angry like immediately like i i backtrack that feeling and i go like okay that's how i currently feel right now because of what's in front of me and what's affecting me but what actually even lets that bother me Mm. you know where does that and then i just keep going back as far as i possibly can i go holy shit like really that's why i identify with that and then like it's so tough to do that but i always challenge people like anytime you feel and they and i think that we we tend to like focus on the bad stuff but even the good stuff like there's there's things that you know I get really really excited about or that makes me really really happy and then I ask myself like what drives that is it so that I love that uh, I, I I love doing that I, I do that for myself as well it's fucking hard mm-hmm. because uh, number one you have to remember to do it but number two you you would be surprised you would be shocked at just how l- little you know about yourself mm-hmm. uh, uh, consciously yeah like. When you, because I do that to myself all the time, and I'm constantly, like, I go deeper, 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 and I think to myself, like, well, there's nothing, there's nothing behind that, or it's just because that person's an asshole, and I keep going deeper, and sometimes I don't get it for a long time, and then it hits me, and then I look back and I go, oh shit, mm-hmm. like that's why, you know, I was responding that way, that's why I felt that way. And I had a conversation with uh, with one of my online clients the other day, in fact, where we're just getting into the emotional uh, component uh, with food. And she's somebody that tells me like she's got a problem with binge eating. And so I'm waiting for those opportunities where we can talk about it because that's a tough subject to talk Mm, about. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, okay, how are you feeling right now? And she's got metabolic damage. So we had to start her off on low calories and all that. So it's just going to be this uphill battle. And I'm like, okay, well, 
you know, how are you feeling so far uh, with this, <laughs> with these nutrition guidelines I've given you? Because initially what I'll do is I'll, put, I'll have people actually track and hit targets so I can slowly bring them to the intuitive eating aspect of, of nutrition. And she's like, well, I'm good, but I get, I get angry because I, because I want to eat, you know. Oh, no, no, that's not what she said. She says, I'm hungry. She says, I'm, I'm really hungry right now. And I said, okay, what are you craving? And I'm real careful with the words that I use because crave is a very different, you know, it's very, very specific versus, you know, you're just hungry, like generally hungry. Yeah. So I said, well, what are you craving? And of course, she's craving the foods she thinks she can't have. This is, this is very important. So I said, what are you craving? And she's like, well, sugar. Uh, and I said, what in particular? Oh, cookies. Like, I, I'm really craving cookies right now. And I said, okay, why is that making you angry? Like, why are you angry that you want cookies? Yeah. Okay, think about it. Like, there's a lot of things I want, but it doesn't piss me off. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why are you mad that you're not eating cookies? And she said, well, because I want them, but I can't have them. I said, okay. I said, I want you to read that, what you just sent me. I want you to read that to yourself. And let me know what you get out of it. And she's like, well, I don't, I mean, I don't get anything out of it. Like, and I said, okay, keep reading it. Keep thinking about it. And it didn't come to her. And I said, okay. I said, let me, let me help you. I said, can you have the cookies if you really want them? And she's like, yeah. I said, so it's not that you can't have them. It's that you choose not to have them. And she's like, oh shit. Okay. I said, <laughs> it would piss me off. If I wanted something and somebody said you can't have it and they prevented me, from, like if I wanted freedom and someone threw me in a cage, I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah. But if I go in a jail cell and I and it doors open and I'm just like I just want to chill here for a little while, I like it in here. I'm not gonna be pissed off. It's a big difference. Both in the same jail cell, the difference is I know I'm choosing to be in there mm. versus I'm forced to be in there. And I said you're not being forced. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. I said you're choosing to not eat those cookies. And, and I want you to say that to yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to eat the cookies. At some point, you might. You're probably going to go and have them. But know that it's okay and that you're choosing. And don't judge yourself because the second you think you can't, that's what's making you pissed off. That's, where the, that's the origins of this feeling of anger and frustration. And that anger and frustration is only going to drive you. It's the dark side. It's, it's the dark yeah. side. Yeah. It makes you, turn you powerful. into a Sith. Um, but, I mean, that's just one of those things like – you know, like you said, Adam, when you're having these feelings, like ask yourself, why am I so triggered or affected yeah. by this this particular situation? You know, like, you know what used to piss me off a lot was, uh, and I know people get mad at this, when you're watching TV and the fucking video, the commercial pops up with the singing and it's the fucking dogs and they're starving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or the fucking the starving kids and the, you know oh, yeah. and it's like you change you get angry like fucking stupid commercial pisses me off and ah oh, shit reality now and I ask myself like why is this making me angry I know why because I feel guilty that I'm not doing anything yeah to help these That's what to is. help these it's animals your own these kids insecurity yeah so then I ask oh, yeah, myself they're, they're poking right at that right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah and they yeah. know that hit that hits home well, and you also get mad at the person marketing it that way you know right like they're they're, they're cornering you. And and making it so like they, they want to make you feel like shit. That's right. the whole, that's the whole message. But nobody it's not like it's not presenting it but, like there's a real need and but like, nobody like, can make you feel like anything. Yeah. Like I'm choosing to feel like shit because I'm guilty. But yeah, you're choosing Because I yeah. feel guilty that I'm not helping. <laughs> well, because so, they know, yeah. So what I started to do was if you're a good person, you'll feel something. <laughs> well, what I started and that's see that's uh -oh, uh -oh. think about that. I, I think about that. If I'm being it, honest it, with it, myself, I chuckle, right? There's a part of me that actually chuckles and I chuckle because what goes through my head when I see that I go like, Oh, oh here here it comes. Yeah, 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 right. I go, I go, Oh, that's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, th yeah. but think about think like, about that what gets you, me. You know, I get I see yeah. you. I see you. You know, that's how I see it. It's but Justin, think about this. You just said something interesting you said if you're a good person you'll feel shitty but no that's no, not true i know i know you're it, a good person you know what i mean what, well what it is is because this is what i started doing i either a make the decision to help or b make the decision not to help but understand it's my decision but, right but you don't and have and to I no feel, longer feel bad you, gotta, no longer I, you own it you own it yeah that's no it. i, I get that. I've, I've gotten to that place too and i see the same thing with like you know when, when you're you're parked at, at a stoplight and then you see somebody walking and they're doing their hustle or they're you know we just experienced that right like recently you know? oh yeah the guy with the, the yeah and no i'm normally i'm the guy that's like oh my god whatever i have sure here you yeah. go you know and i'm and i'm like just begrudgingly giving it to them knowing that like maybe they'll do something good with it most likely they're not going to do something good with it you know and uh like for the most part when i give i want to give when it's my idea 
And this is like my time. This is my idea. Like I see a need. I want to put this in this direction, you know? And then there's other times where I just want to like get out. Like I want to check myself on that and just be like, why, why does it have to be on your time? Why are you so selfish about, you know, you wanting to have to control this whole process when somebody's right in front of you that, that obviously has a real need. And why am I judging them? And don't judge yourself, dude. Yeah. Like it's like, this is a hard thing it's to a say. It's a struggle, though. This is a hard thing to say. I've actually had to say this to myself. This is very fucking difficult because nobody wants to admit this. But I've actually found myself getting angry with the poor guy on the street, and I'm pissed off. And then I'm like, why am I pissed off? And, oh, I know why. He's making me feel bad. Hold on. He can't make me feel anything. Why do I feel bad? I feel guilty. Yeah. So now what I say to my so I've said this to myself a couple times, and it's fucking hard. I'll literally say to myself, I don't care enough about that person to give them money. And it's true. You don't. You and go. that's okay. There's nothing fucking wrong with that. Absolutely. You're yeah. human. Everybody's human. You can't give to every single person you see. You do have more shit than you need, which is fine. We all do. We're all human. It's just a human condition. But it's okay. But admitting that to yourself and saying it, uh, you'll see that your actions become more of a reflection of your true self. I find myself giving a little bit more sometimes and sometimes yeah. not. But I say to myself, I just don't care about that person enough. Well, you can see so how that, 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 that weaves right into your relationships. You have your you friends, can, your family, and yourself. Your you could take other, that one yourself. step further, too. You yeah. can take that one step further and go like, if, 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 it's, if that made you feel compelled all of a sudden out of nowhere to give a dollar bill to that guy because he's got a sign up in front of you that's making you feel guilty, well... I could probably do a lot more for somebody. So if I if I have this if I feel this burden that I'm not doing enough or I'm mm. not helping others and I needed a sign in front of me from a guy on the street that's saying that, well then it, just handing that $1 is almost selfish because it's like a way of me saying that, you know, I don't like really I don't really want to address helping somebody because I don't even know who this guy is. I don't know where that $1 bill is, but yet I feel compelled to give. Yeah. And like you said, I have no connection to this motherfucker, so if I feel compelled to give, then really what I should do is I should sink I should fucking now use that I and, should and now go yeah, do re- something, reflect on that and do something with do that. Do something that really that, is going to help out. Yeah. Do something that's going to help out more than one yeah. than two. Go, I can go do something that I know that can go help online. 20, 30 research. people yeah. and, and give, giving them and could potentially not even use it use it through money. I could give like knowledge to somebody well, or help or like so right. shelter. So many I, things. I had this com- conversation. Right. It doesn't always have to be resources. I had this conversation with my girlfriend the other day. She's so on, some, on, on certain subjects like her awareness level is like on a, another level and this is one of them. And I, 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 I can't, I cannot tell you how many times we'll go eat food, we'll leave, we'll have leftovers, and if she sees a homeless person, she isn't the food. she'll go give them them. My wife does the and same she'll give thing. them money every yeah. every yeah. time, right? right? And I'm always like, ah, oh, what are you doing? And at like, one yeah. point, and she would give them money, like she'll just give them ten dollars, like yeah. she'll give them like big bills. She's not giving them like a dollar. She give them ten bucks, twenty bucks, fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. And I remember, and she's not like rich or anything like that. And I tell her, I said, I said, you know that motherfucker's just gonna go buy alcohol with it. And she's like, so, she's like, he wants to fucking feel better. Like I, I like he, he he's making himself feel, like I'm not gonna judge what he's gonna do with it. Right. It's just it's my money to give to him, and he wants to feel. And that was her thing. And, and it's it's there's nothing there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the other thing is, if you really want to help, this just sounds crazy and it sounds selfish, but it's not. It's fucking true. If you really look deep into it and you're objective, you'll realize that if you want to mm. help as many people in the world as possible, just be your true self and help yourself as much as possible. If you do that and you become your true self and you help yourself as much as possible in a true sense, not based on securities, fears, not based on greed, just narcissism, just true self, you'll find the world will be a fucking amazing, peaceful place and people will help themselves, uh, help themselves and help others. Well, because there's that other part of it, right? Is to how are they, how are you going to lift them up? Are you just feeling like an enabler? Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So there's, I mean, that's just, that's a real thing. It Absolutely. Is. Am I just enabling them to to get re- reward them for that's be, what, being being in a hole versus trying to pull them out? That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, that's how I feel. Like if you feel compelled to do something like that, I feel like you know what? Like you, me handing that guy five dollars. Actually, if I really want to help this motherfucker, I'll pull my call, car over. Yeah, give him, a, give sit, him a contact. I should sit down and talk to him and find out who he is there and what go. I can truly do to help them. Which, have you ever done that? Understand where they're no. coming from. I've done that. I've never felt time. compelled to do that. It'll, it'll, it's, uh, so I was, it's uh, eye opening. Dude, uh, I was, uh, years ago, uh, I was with uh, a friend of mine and he did that. He actually, and I was annoyed. Like, why are you talking to this, you know, crazy person? Yeah. And they had a whole conversation. And uh, I was like, it was mind blowing to me. Like now, like you know the person, you hear their story or whatever, and it's just a completely different connection to that whole thing. But like what you said, Adam, like 
maybe that's look i'll tell you what adam you've got the gift of motivation you've got the gift of of conversation and communication yeah. uh, why not use your most valuable tool uh, uh, to help people you'll probably help people way more i think it's, I think it's a lot more well, valuable it is. For well, sure. and i feel like if we really really look deep inside when we're doing that giving the the quick dollar or ten dollars is almost a cop-out it's almost an easier cop out because I can spare it. I can spare the change in my fucking thing. No problem. I'm not yeah. going to miss three dollars right there. That ain't a big deal to me. But it's really the message I'm sending myself. You know what I'm really doing is I'm really copping out of what's really going inside because I feel compelled to do that and I'm not digging in within. And if I really want to truly help that person, am I really giving them any help by handing them three or five dollars? Or if I really well, I'll pull over. And I'll spend some time with him and probably be able to either one, connect him somewhere, give him shelter, maybe give just give him motivation for the day or, mm-hmm. you know, a million other possibilities. Or where, someone to listen. Yeah, exactly. Know, like, or maybe that's I all you I doubt that like anybody listens. Yeah, exactly. I remember yeah. there, I remember reading that I remember uh, when I was a kid, their pastor read this story about a person who committed suicide, jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, and before they did, they had wrote a, a suicide letter. And on the and they had to walk. I think it was like ten miles to get to the Golden Gate Bridge. And they had said that they wouldn't kill themselves if one person stopped and said hi to them. Ugh. And 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 supposedly, like you know, this came out later on. It was actually a true story. It came out later on, and you know they, that that person. There's tons of people that actually knew that they saw that person in the morning. So oh. it was a busy place walking to walking to San Francisco or the to the bridge. You're bound to walk, probably walk by 20 to 30 people and not one person stopped to say hi. And that person ended up taking their life, right? So you think about, you don't think about those little things like that. And I feel like, you know, when we get at a stoplight like that and we see things like that and we feel that, like, I think the even better is to look deeper inside. Like, yeah, you can only love people uh, as much as you are, uh, allow yourself to love yourself. That's mm-hmm. true. It's mm-hmm. a true thing. However much you think you love people, it's not. It's not as full as and full as it possibly can be if you're not like that, if you're not fully loving yourself in a true and honest way. It's 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 limited. You're limited because your capacity to truly love is limited because you can't even do it to yourself. Well, and here's the thing. This is where and I know if someone's hung in there this long in this episode, this really comes <laughs> this know, right? this really comes back around to your health and your health and fitness journey more than anything does, dude. Like I the, love the, I love that we're in fitness because it's such a it's such a small microchasm yeah. that represents so much more. Right. Like right now we're talking about big things, right? Big mm-hmm. big big things. Your life and you know how you view yourself. Well, and, we talk, but if you can look at just fitness, yeah, uh, it's, it's tangible. It's it's tangible. You can see things change on a very specific level, and then that spreads out to all the. Totally, big things. totally. Yeah. Like when you approach fitness that way, I know we, we say all the time, like you know, tr- exercise and eat, like you love yourself. Well, not you know like you why? Because you're, yourself, you're taking care of yourself. Yeah, that's what fitness is, and then Re- that's what health is. You're taking care of yourself. Imagine that though. Imagine now people actually taking care. They don't of themselves. No. How many of us take care of ourselves? Not very many of us. Oh no, that's and most people that struggle with that, and you know, hired one of us at one point in our careers. You know, they that was really what was going on inside was the inability to love themselves or to really dive into what it was that uh, they want to do for themselves and what was driving that. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that was a majority. And that took me a long time to really figure that all out and realize. And it was when I realized that I wasn't helping enough people. And I've talked about this on the show before that if we're truly honest with ourselves, man, at least for the first five years of my career, maybe longer, you know. 20% success rate maybe mm-hmm. you know and i and i consider myself really which, which really was, good which is twice as good as everybody else yeah that's what i mean like i consider myself and so because if you're a really good trainer you're giving really good information knowledge and you're seeing 20% okay you're seeing more than all the rest of trainers so in your head you think you're doing a great job but in reality you're really not 80% of the people you're not really helping yeah. and why is that and like when i started to really dive into that like as a trainer like what the fuck like I know how to program design. I know how to. I know. I know food. I know that. I know all the things to give them. I can get myself in great shape. I've helped a bunch of other people. Why won't can I get these people? When I realize, man, the bigger piece of this game is teaching them about themselves and mm-hmm. connecting all those dots and those levels of awareness with nutrition and health and their self image and lifting weights and cardio and there's so many relationships yeah, there. You're trying to navigate them to find themselves. Oh really? fuck, man! And when yeah. you when you do. Oh, it's game over. Now you now you're giving like ninety percent of mm-hmm. your people because, and then at that point, like some of them actually 
didn't really need to change their body. They needed to change their outlook. Of course. They yeah. changed their oh, mind. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How many times? That's the real change. It man. is. And and normally the ones that need to lose a ton of weight or want to build muscle with that, that ends up being a byproduct when they find themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty fucking amazing. It is. And when you think of obesity, it's like an armor. Like people build up this massive armor to keep people away from them and keep the keep themselves Literally separate. bouncing. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, no joke. Yeah. You know, yeah, Here, here's sure. here's something tangible I started doing recently because I, I like to uh, leave our audience with some tangible like, OK, I can do these specific things. Here's something. Uh, and I actually learned this from uh, some of the women in my family. Uh, like my mom, she'll say something like, oh, you know, it feels good to have a good cry sometimes. And I, I, I've heard that so many times. I think to myself, like, whatever, that's stupid. And as men, we're taught to be ashamed of crying, right? It's yeah. like, but think about it. If you can become moved enough to cry in a positive way, that's a, that's a transformative, uh, that's, a, that's a potentially very transformative period of time. Like if you're moved enough by something you've, you're seeing or hearing or witnessing that moves you so much that you're moved to tears, then that is a fucking opportunity for transformation. But as men, we're taught so much to shun that or, and to, to be ashamed of that, that we actually avoid it. And I found myself, because I have family members, my mom is in particular, she's fucking notorious for this. She'll share these super inspirational emotional videos on YouTube like the like the there was the one where there was this this boy who had this, some horrible neurological disorder but his dad came home from fucking Iraq and the kid got out of his fucking wheelchair and it took him like 5 minutes to walk 5 feet but he got out of his chair and made it to his dad and hugged him and what I'll do usually when I'll see those videos is I'll flip right through cuz hell no I don't want to yeah. fucking I don't, don't want to get emotional and cry yeah. right I know where this goes and you know what I started saying to myself like you know what I'm going to do I'm going to fucking seek those videos out sometimes because I notice that when I get touched like that, I seem to be... State change, bro. I get a change of state. State and I, change. And right I become there. a little bit better afterwards. Yep. I actually shared one I on the... I get snot bubbles and all I that. actually <laughs> shared one on the on the forum. I think I shared one. It was either this morning or last night. It was these... I got to look into this. Apparently, they make these glasses that you can put on for some people with color bl- color blindness that lets them see color, which is fucking amazing technology, right? And I, there was this grandpa wow. and this old guy is like in his probably 60s, 70s. And his kids got him this, these sunglasses, these glasses. And he put, and he's like, you could tell he's this very stoic kind of mm. like older guy. Yeah. He puts them on and boom, takes them off in two seconds and just buries his hands, buries his head in his hands. And then he comes up and he puts them back on. And then he's looking at his hat. He's looking at his, his grandkids and he's fucking so moved. He's crying. And I got moved by watching. Oh, video. have you I seen that shit? Have you seen? And I'm like, normally I would avoid that shit, right? But have you seen all the videos they've done on people that right were now. like blind their whole life and have had surgery now? Oh, they can it's see? Fucking, I love it. Oh, my God. Like, I you love could, it. You, they, or they can hear for the first yes, time. Yes, exactly. Oh. They, they've done those. I've watched. The, oh, my God, dude. Are you kidding me? Like. Yeah gives you like a whole new appreciation and perspective on the things that we take yeah. for granted and are that are pretty fucking unique. So I guess the tangible thing that I've been trying to implement is I try to now I don't run away from difficult uh situations. I I'll seek them out. I don't seek them out all the time because it's exhausting. But now I'll seek them out because I know within that moment I have an oppor- it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity for some kind of transformative change or shift in the way I view things. Well, then if we're given those, then I think the the tangible thing was what I was talking about, which, you know, I've taught myself over years and years of practice, which is, you know, evaluate all of your uh, emotions, especially major uh, state shifts, like Sal mm-hmm. was just saying. So if you get really excited, you know, or really emo- like sad or really angry or just a shift, like, you know, you go with you throughout your day and then there's things that happen in your day that you can't control and they shift your, 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 your state, right? Your, your state mm-hmm. of mind. So, and that can be positive, negative, um, you know, joyful, all kinds of different st- states. But when it, when you feel those and you, at the end of the night, or if you can, right, then eventually you'll get to the point where you do it right away. But I had to start with like at the end of the night, laying there and kind of reflecting on my day and like how my, how my day went, right. And like how all the different moods I went through and then go into why did that? Why did I do that? Why did I feel that way? It'll start to tell you so much about yourself. Excellent. Uh, Thirty days of coaching is still available and it's still free at mindpumpmedia.com. You just go on our site. There's an opt-in, a little opt-in thing that pops up. Enter your your information. Every single day for thirty days, you're going to get an email 
with a new topic. And we go into all kinds of stuff. We go into meditation, wellness, gut health, and then basics like fat, protein, carbs, or, you know, resistance training and all that stuff. And we go into detail. We, we put episodes of our podcast, timestamps, so we go into detail. So you know from five minutes to ten minutes, we go into detail on that particular subject. Studies. And we're, studies. We put the studies that back up what we're saying in there. So, you can, so those of you who are really into science – um, and like facts, you can read the studies, dissect the studies. We'd love your feedback too if you disagree with what we're saying or whatever. There's a place to comment right It is a working document. It continues to improve or continue to add to it. Once you sign up once, it's free and it's always going to be free forever. You find that at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you ever have a question that you want answered on our popular Qua episodes, that's our Q&A episodes. The Qua! You go to Mind Pump Radio on Instagram, we'll post up... Uh, it'll say QA or Q&A. Underneath it, ask your questions. We a- we actually answer a very, very good percentage of the questions that are asked. So there's a good chance yours will get aired on our podcast. Uh, and you can also check out our personal Instagram pages. Sometimes we actually put up promos on there too. So if you want to get some good deals or whatever, check. You just keep watching them. My personal one is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.